We will now move to the motion before the House this evening, which is, this House believes genetic engineering uh, undermines the nature of humanity. I now look to the first speaker, member of Secretary's Committee, Sara Dubey, St. Hugh's College, to open the case for the proposition. Thank you, Mr. President. It is an honor to be speaking in this historic chamber tonight. And I'm sure you must all be very surprised to see that out of all the scientists on Union Committee, I'm speaking in this debate as the rogue PPEist. But I'll do my best. Genetic engineering has the potential to change our lives. This is undeniable. Today, the opposition will tell you that this genetic engineering will herald a new, improved age for humanity. For instance, the CRISPR-Cas9 genome editing technology that can be programmed to target specific areas of our genetic code and to edit our DNA at these locations can correct genetic mutations and cure inherited conditions. And I'm sure the opposition will elaborate a lot more on these benefits of genetic engineering tonight. They will challenge us. Surely, any technology that would alleviate the misery of so many can only benefit humanity? But the value of, gen of genetic engineering in transforming medical practice and in curing disease is not something I'm here to dispute. Instead, I ask you, do you really think that once we have the power to edit our genetic makeup, we will stop at using it only to cure disease? Of course not. With control over the creation of our capabilities within our reach, Humans will not resist making themselves into faster, stronger, healthier versions of their previous selves. Today's motion is not about whether genetic engineering is good or bad, healthy or risky. It is instead a question about how it interacts with the essence of what makes us human, whether it undermines the most precious components of our humanity. The issue with artificially augmenting our abilities in seeking physical and mental perfection is that we lose intrinsic and infinitely valuable aspects of our nature. Our strength and our hope in the face of struggle. Our willingness to celebrate our differences as opposed to letting our judgments be dictated by the forces of genetic commercialization. And our ability to love each other for who we are in totality as opposed to obliterating our imperfections. The question that lies at the core of this debate is not what genetic engineering will do for humanity, but what it will do to our humanity. I hope to show you today that the improvements promised by genetic engineering require a sacrifice of our core values, ultimately undermining human nature. But before I continue, it falls upon me to introduce the speakers for tonight's debate. Speaking first on opposition is Dr. Rodolf Barangu, editor-in-chief of the CRISPR Journal, which covers the areas of genome editing and CRISPR research. He was elected just this week to the US National Academy of Sciences. Next, you will hear from Dr. Carol Kirchow, a reproductive biologist and the president and CEO of 32 ATPs, a biological energy development and consulting firm. And closing the case for the opposition is Professor Donna Dickinson, philosopher and emeritus professor of medical ethics and humanities at the University of London. I look forward to hearing a defense of the impact of genetic engineering on the nature of humanity from our distinguished opposition speakers. Continuing the case for the proposition is Professor Joyce Harper, professor of human genetics and embryology at University College London, where she heads the embryology, IVF, and reproductive genetics group. She has been involved in pre-implantation genetics testing for 25 years. And finally, Catherine Lasky, award-winning author of Star Split, a novel discussing the ethics of genetic enhancement of the human race, will be closing the case for the proposition. <coughs> Professor Harper, Ms. Lasky, it is an honor to be debating alongside you tonight. Indeed, it is a privilege to be speaking amongst guests of such caliber on both sides. Mr. President, these are your guests and they are most welcome. Genetic engineering can augment our physical strength and our mental capacity, increasing our lifespan and our focus. 
Becoming stronger and smarter is universally desirable and very relatable, but this in itself does not fundamentally alter the nature of humanity. It is the implications of making these changes through tools such as CRISPR that should be a cause for concern. Such technology puts the power of defining physical and mental characteristics that shape our lives into the hands of other humans, reducing our very selves into something that they have the ability to mold. When our attributes are predetermined and pre-selected for, for by others before we are even born, our success is caused by science rather than by our own efforts, shifting a sense of achievement and fulfillment from us to the person that chose our genetic makeup. For instance, breaking an athletic world record after countless failures and years of discipline training seems intuitively to have more value than breaking this record due to genetically enhanced capabilities. This is because the praise for the success is directed towards ourselves and towards the athlete in the former case, while it's directed towards the person who enhanced the athlete's abilities in the latter. A world in which genetic engineering prevails thereby diminishes human agency and merit. It also erodes the value of human strength, perseverance, and hope in the face of struggle. Why would the athlete need to persevere in training for a race if their physical makeup has been specifically chosen for them to excel in sprinting? Where would the beauty be in hoping to achieve their dream without the knowledge of whether they'll attain it if they know that their capabilities have already been chosen by an external influence for them to succeed? As such flawlessness becomes the norm, the worth of determination and hope, two values at the core of our spirit, is diminished. Now, I can see that there may be a lot of criticism of this line of argument, the primary one being that surely it is worth it to sacrifice, these, to sacrifice these values in a world without suffering, where there's no need for them in the first place. But we're not debating whether such a world would be better than the one we live in now, but rather whether it would be a society that undermines what currently makes us human. And this is why the objection actually captures my point that what we want out of genetic engineering does require a sacrifice of part of our nature, regardless of whether this sacrifice can be justified. But let's take a pause. You may indeed wonder if we're in need of a reality check here. Surely, the opposition may argue, humans are not irrational beings. We are clearly not driven by the obsessive pursuit for perfection we would be able to rein in our inner desires and perhaps even regulate the use of genetic engineering so that we can avoid all the setbacks to our nature that I have been discussing. Because after all, this pattern clearly follows what has always happened throughout history, right? Wrong. Consider our obsession over cosmetic surgery or our continued subjugation of animals to mindless testing so as to push the limits of science or the evil brought out in humankind as nuclear energy has become one of the greatest dangers to humanity today. Or indeed, our overzealous eagerness at the mere thought of being able to design our very own offspring like handbags or clothes or shoes. This removes the fundamental ethical boundary between consumer commodities and human beings. Unfortunately, I'm afraid we have grounds for far less optimism than the opposition may wish we had today. While determination and hope are core aspects of our humanity, it is love, more than anything, that truly makes us human. Love of our family, despite their imperfections. Love of our friends and our partners, even when they make mistakes. And love of ourselves, despite our flaws. The existence of genetic engineering within the capitalist framework distorts this love in pointing to the commercialization of certain attributes that will be for sale as particularly desirable, such as being taller, having 20 by 20 vision, or even attaining happier moods. This creates a society where superiority is determined by our arbitrary judgments as genetic engineering makes sexist, racist, and ageist expectations on what constitutes superficial attractiveness more possible than ever to transform into reality. 
the creation of a hierarchy of attributes deemed more popular than others eradicates our celebration and our love of human differences. This already exists in the US egg donor market, where ordinary working class women are paid $5,000 for their eggs, while tall and attractive Ivy League women get paid $50,000, obliterating basic notions of human equality. Imagine what would happen to such a market when genetic engineering plays a greater role in our society, giving us even more control over our characteristics and extending the privilege of the wealthy who would have the ability to buy a supposedly perfect genetic makeup. One of the most fundamental tenets of parental love is that it should be unconditional. In large part, this is because while a child is made up of the genes of their parents, it is not up to the parents to choose the specific attributes of their children. But as this power is made feasible via genetic engineering, more of a child's makeup is up to choice as opposed to chance, thereby transforming parental love into something that is conditional upon the choices they make regarding their child's traits, instead of loving their children, no matter how superficially beautiful or smart or sporty they are. The possibility of perfection in one's physical and mental characteristics also distorts love within other relationships. It is so easy to admire something that is perfect, but what makes our love for someone truly human today is that it, ex it, is that it exists despite that person's flaws. Realizing that nobody, least of all ourselves, is perfect and loving them anyways is an intrinsic and beautiful part of the human condition. But genetic engineering takes that ability away from us. It degrades our love. Its very existence reminds us that any flaw we identify in our children is our fault, that every imperfection is a deliberate mistake, that every perceived failure in others is merely the fault of poor designer parenting and is something that should be corrected rather than embraced. Most of the debates that take place in this chamber reflect on mistakes of the past, or tackle crises of the present. This motion is of particular paramount importance because it addresses our future. The beauty of our nature consists in the poignancy of the human struggle from which a multitude of virtues such as hope and courage arise and in our boundless capacity to love. The creation of a perfect race will not happen tomorrow or even in a few years, but it is the ultimate end point of genetic engineering, which ignores the complexity of our nature. It is ultimately self-defeating as it erodes the perfect imperfection of the human condition. With nothing in our lives to love or to expect beyond what we ourselves desire, we are playing the divine and in doing so, sacrificing what is human within us. In trying to master our nature, we undermine it, and it is for this reason that I urge you to vote in favor of the motion tonight. I'm not done yet. <laughs> Voting with the proposition does not mean rejecting the importance of genetic engineering in alleviating physical and mental suffering. It does not equate to voting against using genetic engineering for these aims in the future. It is instead a simple, strong acknowledgement of the fact that our physical and mental capacities do not constitute an inherent part of our nature. And in perfecting these attributes, as we will inevitably try to do with genetic technology, we lose many of the core aspects that make being human into something beautiful. I hope that you see the value of these qualities and that their erosion is a loss to humanity. The gravity of this motion is unparalleled, and I urge you to walk, walk out of the door marked eyes and vote with the proposition tonight. Thank you. <laughs>